Good evening, everyone. And I wanted to welcome you to our Inflammation Causes and Prevention um, talk this evening with Dr. Justine and Dr. Udani. So Dr. Justine is available for any of your questions that you might have related to inflammation or material that you hear or see on this particular um, webinar. You can also um, text her at 647-987-9355 and she'll be happy to get back to you. I'd really love to welcome Dr. Justine this evening. Um, she is um, an amazing woman, um, an amazing speaker, and she is very passionate about, um, about her team, but also about the health and the well-being of all of her patients. Dr. Danny joins us, and she's our natural path here at Dr. Justine Blaney Wellness Center. Um, and she um, comes with a wide variety of areas of expertise and is very passionate about women's health and digestive issues, skin condition and stress. And she really believes that everyone has the ability to make healthy and long lasting changes. Please help me welcome Dr. Justine and Dr. Udani. Awesome. Happy you're here with us. And man, share it with friends. But well, we've got great stuff coming up. But definitely, definitely the fall makeover. This is the one where we usually have 100 people at the community center. Um, and although we're doing it online, we still have so much information. That one is almost two hours long. Uh, full, full, full jam-packed of nutrition information, learning about the keto diet, paleo diet, advanced accord plan. So food to help with chronic disease, but so much more. Tune in every Tuesday uh, to stay on top with our talk. Now, this topic is close to my heart. This is my Oma and Opa. I come from a Dutch family. You can see behind me right there. Oops, maybe there. Uh, the Dutch shoe, um, the clogs. But uh, my grandfather uh, lived to 98, and my grandmother is currently 93. Um, so we know that uh, they did have arthritis, you know, and, and my grandmother does have arthritis and gets regular care for her sciatica to manage and handle it better. Is getting regular exercises at her senior's home um, to try and stay and keep moving. At one point with COVID on, they were doing it in their chairs just outside their doorways and listening to the the recommendations over the PA system. So we know to move better and definitely think about it to have 17 great grandchildren. Wow. Right. So, and, and over 70 years of being married again. Wow. So today in honor of my grandparents, in honor of our, all of our grandparents and our families, we want to talk about inflammation and arthritis. Inflammation is so uh, crucial. It is affecting our blood vessels, not just our joints. Um, you can see by the healthy artery at the top, a big hole. And then if you have inflammation, you have a small hole. And that can be affected by sugar, damaged fats, toxins, nerve damage. So we're going to talk today about seven factors that affect your inflammation. And much of this information comes from drjockers.com. So I encourage you to sign up to his free emails. Lots of great free information, jam-packed um, and referenced. So please know that much of our information, all of it is referenced, but much of it comes from Dr. Jocker's um, uh, website. Yes. So what is the inflammatory response? So we, uh, at one point in our lives, we have all had a cut or a bruise, you know, and like we've seen um, a wound. So inflammatory response is something that our body naturally uses as a healing mechanism. So whenever you have a cut, it's that inflammation, you know, that swelling, the redness, a little bit of pain that kind of signals to your body saying, hey, there's a cut, something's wrong, let's go in and fix it. So that is actually a healthy inflammatory response. So what's needed for a healthy inflammatory response is a balanced immune system. So when our immune system is um, an, a little bit more overactive, that's when you tend to see more of those um, um, ar rheumatoid arthritis or autoimmune conditions like an um, allergy response, for example. So in here, um, 
a balanced, balanced immune system is all about making sure you're, you're facing the external threats um, properly, but at the same time, also making sure that your internal threats aren't um, doing like aren't too too bad. So an immune overreaction is, for example, an allergies. Uh, for example, like I said, the autoimmune problems are just when the immune system kind of goes over what it should, really should be going. An immune underreaction is when you know you're immunocompromised or suppressed. So like cancer, for example, when, when you know, your immune system isn't able to over um, help and overtake those cancerous cells. So um, what is acute inflammation? So that's what I mentioned when you have a cut, you know, that's a stimulus that sends a signal to your body saying, okay, I need some healing done here. So acute inflammation is actually good for you because it's a healing uh, mechanism. What's bad and what's toxic is chronic inflammation. So this is where something's going on on some underlying condition. So like my doctor just mentioned, it could be talk too much sugar in your system, some kind of toxins that's constantly signaling to your body that there is something happening. So your body goes into this um, adaptive immunity response where there's a chronic inflammatory response where immune cells are trying to help, but it's not really, it's kind of making more harm than good. So this chronic inflammation is what we're trying to, we're focusing on today. So it's all about, you know, um, what are some things that can trigger this chronic inflammatory response? So this can be your gut. It can be lack of exercise. It can be some of the medications that you're taking on. And this can really damage your body because some are some ways that inflammation can damage your body is you can experience memory loss. You can have increased risk of cardiovascular risk so like dr justine mentioned in those blood vessels instead of having a big open hole you start to get smaller and smaller because this inflammation is making these blood vessels uh, smaller you can have issues with weight you can have um, issues with accelerated aging joint pain loss of mobility these are all signs of chronic inflammation so some are some, what are some factors that can cause inflammation so Eating inflammatory foods, you know, eating those bad fats, eating um, um, when you're under stress, eating lots of high sugar foods, you can have leaky gut, you can have chronic infections, environmental toxins like heavy metals or glyphosate and these things. Um, I really highly recommend going to checking out Dr. Jockers for uh, more in-depth factors about what can cause inflammation. But these are some of the most common things that can cause inflammation. So like we said before inflammation is a healthy response when it's acute you know when it's uh, for a good time but uh, this is a uh, one slide that explains just the pathway of what can happen and um, let's see if you have a cut or something like that where our immune system kind of comes in pushes everybody aside and says all right we need to heal what, what's up happening here do you have white blood cells migrating to the, the site of injury setting up uh, offices there you know per se and then making sure healing gets done so that is a cons that's a case of an acute inflammation so chronic inflammation when you have it all the time that's when you you really start to wear and tear your body down so let's go further down into some ways that you can possibly prevent inflammation. So, because we talked about how inflammation can affect the body. So in this case, you can affect the brain, you can affect the kidneys, the liver, and thyroid. It can just be affecting your whole body. Yes, yeah, so these are some, some other possible um, disease, diseases that are a result of this, this inflammation. So leaky gut, stress can add to that. Anxiety and depression can be a sign of chronic inflammation. Leaky brain, you know, when you have memory issues, your brain fog um, and autoimmune diseases, of course, you know, you have that constant inflammation going on, your immune system is going on overdrive, trying to figure out what's going on, but then it turns into an autoimmune disease over, over time. Yeah, so this is, uh, we already kind of mentioned about what is acute versus chronic, because chronic is where the, this is this aggravation, this trigger is just sustained, whereas acute is, is good for us. You know, we need that healing. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> no, no, no. So this is just uh, another way we can see, um, you know, inflammation isn't necessarily bad. You know, it, it can lead to progressive healing, but it's when we have it too much, you get that progressive distractions. You get that arthritis, cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's, for example, too. 
So now we got the the good and the bad. And if it gets too much, that's where is a challenge with dealing with inflammation. So today we were going to cover the 10 ways to deal with inflammation, deal with arthritis. We're going to find the cause. We're going to find how to maintain your spine, exercise, stretching, nutrition, the do's, the don'ts, the supplements. And at the end, we're going to have 10 non-drug solutions for pain relief. So if you are suffering from arthritis or you do have those achy areas, right at the end, we're going to have 10 ways, a list to go over things that are non-drug, all natural that you can do to help yourself. So number one, getting to the cause. Um, it's not enough just to mask the problem, right? It doesn't matter if it's a natural supplement or a drug supplement. The best thing is to find out where the cause is so you can be more specialized in your approach. And I know a lot of times people say, well, it's just because I'm getting old. It's because I'm um, aging, right? But what they know is that age is not a breakdown, um, a factor that breakdown. I see patients in their 70s and they have way less arthritis than those in their 20s. Now we're seeing more people on laptops and on phones, leading to way more arthritic areas, way too much sitting. And so our joints are meant to last for years. The challenge is, is that we're maybe not properly maintaining them. And then in the past, what happens is, um, you know, people would just mask the symptoms and yet we have to look to maintain our joints this is the same as you maintain a car you need to have proper alignment you need to have the proper exercises and the proper nutrition so a lot of times you know if you leave a car in the driveway for six months it's going to need a tune-up well the same thing with our bodies it need constant motion constant stretching proper alignment and the only way to know your alignment is to do an assessment of your alignment to know if you have a problem or not so previously, the report uh, or the advice for arthritis or achy joints was just take drugs, take ibuprofen, take aspirin, take naproxen, take anti-inflammatory supplements without looking at the fact that these have all have risks and side effects. If we look at typically it was Tylenol, you know, just over the counter arthritis Tylenol, lot looking at the fact that Tylenol has been recommended to be off the market for years. This goes back, you know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, we've known the side effects of Tylenol. So it is much um, recommended in order to find natural ways. Instead of something to mask the symptoms, look at ways of prevention in a natural way. And that's something that our naturopaths, like Dr. Udani, We'll try and create an action plan for you. Sometimes we look at aspirin, and yet we know that aspirin can leak, lead to leaky gut and to affect our um, bleeding within our uh, internal um, body. So our goal, again, is less is best. Now, any one of these, always make sure if you're already on a medication to make sure you talk to your health practitioner your someone um, before just quitting and starting something new. We always recommend that you have an action plan that is customized to you so that even if you're going to go off medications or reduce medications and you add supplements, um, to manage your overall health that you do this in a safe way. So you want to be talking to your medical doctor and your naturopath having that team approach. Now I do have people who go for the Robax and they're not really aware um, of the side effects. If you read the, the, you know, the blueprint on the inside, it's, you can see this massive list of side effects. And we look at some of the side effects of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. For me, it's something that I'm allergic to, so I actually get quite sick um, and an upset stomach. So you want to make sure that you take care of your stomach, even if you are on NSAIDs, that you talk to a naturopath to how to protect your gut. As Dr. Udani said, that can lead to more inflammation in your body, so it lead to a cycle of problems. One of the things that we do know that the more a drug is on the market, the more you know about side effects. So this idea of something new isn't always something better. Always to make sure that you've done your due diligence with your health practitioners to find the right combination or the right alternatives for you. 
If you look more at the side effects um, of Celebrex, Vioxx, now Vioxx has been taken off the market, but Celebrex and Vioxx are both COX-2 inhibitors. My, my stepmother was prescribed Celebrex um, to deal with sciatica, and it's still happening today to deal with uh, joint pain and pain down, radiating down the leg. And yet it has this list of side effects. To continue, this list will go on and then it will go on again. So literally there's hundreds of side effects. And so our again is to get to the root cause of the problem rather than just mask the, the symptoms. And some medications, painkillers are needed for a short-term response, but to add acupuncture that Dr. Udani would do, to add the right supplements, to add the right exercises is always a great way to help manage pain. So if we look at it and do a survey, how many drugs actually fix the cause of the inflammation versus um, fix the response to inflammation, just actually getting rid of pain? If we get rid of the pain, do we actually get rid of the problem, right? If we get rid of the pain, do we actually get rid of the problem? And the answer isn't always um, as obvious. The goal, again, is to get to the root cause, have the right tests done, and then maybe you need a painkiller short term in order to be able to manage the problem long term. And what I want you to know is if your spine is crooked or twisted or out of line, would any drug ever, or any supplement fix a crookedness of the spine, right? The only way to be able to remove subluxations is to be able to have the proper rehab exercises and the proper adjustments. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to be able to talk about spinal health and spinal maintenance. And that means having the right adjustments, the right exercises, the right rehab exercises, the right stretches to get the best response. We do believe that there's an amazing power inside your body that heals. Your brain sends amazing messages through your spine and nervous system to all function in our body. So our goal is to find, remove those areas of subluxation, pressure on those nerves, so your brain can send those messages as freely and clearly as possible. And we know that if we have bad posture, it's just bad. Whether we stand forward, we hunch, we lean to the side, right? We stick our chest forward, we stick our butt out. When we have improper posture, we know that it's not gonna be healthy for our spine. We know that as we age, we need to make sure we maintain that proper posture or you start to get more and more damage. And you think about it, just ask yourself, if you see that hunched over person, are they healthy or not? right? Because this is something that's preventable. So if we look at the natural curves of the spine, the spine is meant to be straight. And we're meant to have a C curve in our neck and a C curve in our lower back. If we maintain the proper alignment, our body is more elastic, it's more able to absorb the pressures of our daily activities. So when we look at these charts where you can see online everywhere, you can see the nerves control your heart, they control your lungs, they control your kidneys, they control your digestion. So as we have the right gas, the right supplements, we still need to make sure our brain can send those messages to all parts of our bodies, our organs, our muscles, our joints in the best way possible. So what chiropractors do is find and remove these areas of subluxation, these pinched nerves or areas of pressure on the spine. That's where we're experts on, finding and removing these subluxations so your body can have optimal potential to function at its best. We remove these stressors so that you're not creating the inflammation in the joints long term. That does require to have the right test in, in many cases to do posture, range of motion, flexibility tests, muscle tests, um, x-rays, thermography, SEMGs, history, looking at leg lengths. We have to do all of these tests in order to be able to manage and test that function as well as possible. As we look at this function of our spine nervous system, then we know that we can help reduce these areas of inflammation. So if I think of an example of Vicky, by the time she came in, Vicky uh, could not use a pen. She could not hold a teacup. Uh, she could not hold her grandchildren. Um, she worked it as a secretary at an um, elementary school. So she had troubles 
with walking um, and was in constant pain, couldn't turn her head because of the damage in her neck. And by the time she came in, she already had 75% loss of that normal curve and neck with years of data entry and doing the work for the, the kids at the school. And our goal, of course, is to find these problems before it becomes arthritic, before the damage builds up. Imagine if your car was out of a line. It didn't have that alignment after a car accident. Would you keep driving it or would you fix that alignment? See, our goal is to have regular checkups for your spinal alignment to prevent that arthritis, uh, to prevent just the wear and tear of those joints building up, and then to have regular checkups. And so we have stages of arthritis where you see one, two, three, four, so we can see what stage you're in, what phase you're in, and then how do we help if possible, because if you get into stage four, you can't correct it. You can help person function a little bit better. You can help with pain and inflammation along with doing acupuncture and the right nutrition and the right exercises, but you can't get full correction. So our goal is always try and find the problem early and then get the right exercises, the right rehab, the right adjustments, the right home environment. You know, For example, like I'm at a stand up desk versus sitting, for long periods of time, try and get the right habits at home to get the best response so we're not building up those arthritic joints. So this is Rosa. And by the time I read Rosa, she was she had a leg that that drooped. All right. She could she could not lift her leg to walk. She needed a brace on her leg. But by the time I met her, she already had such severe, severe arthritis in the lower part of her back that it was pinching those nerves down her leg. So again, our goal, even though she exercised a ton, I know some people say, well, I exercise, I exercise, so I'm great. But if you exercise and you're crooked, you actually strengthen the problem. So it's very important to have proper alignment of your shoulders and your hips, proper alignment of your feet in order to prevent further problems from building up that you can't even feel are building up. So the key is to be able to look at these checkups, make sure everything's great. If it is awesome, go out, do the exercise, everything you love. But if it is out of alignment, fix it, work on it, and then do all those exercises that you love. So if you look at the normal curve in your neck, you're supposed to have a C curve in your neck. But what's happening today is people have a straight curve in their neck because of all the computer work areas on our cell phones, laptops, iPads, driving with our head forward. And so we're leading to more and more damage of the curve in your neck. So Larry, unfortunately, by the time his wife made him come in, um, and he said, oh, like he had no pain. Um, he just came in for that checkup because his wife made him. By the time he came in, you'll see that his neck is almost completely fused. He was fused from literally from here to here. This whole section of his neck completely fused. And you asked Larry to turn right, he did this. You asked Larry to turn left, he did this. You asked Larry to look down, he did this. I asked Larry to look up, he did this. He could not move his neck and so mad at me when I told him that he shouldn't drive, right? Because his neck was completely fused. And he asked, when did this start? I said, it started over 25 years ago and he never had that checkup he deserved. So definitely not something that's correctable at this point. He would have to break his neck apart. Um, and of course, nobody would do that. And even to do his adjustments, could only do the lightest adjustments above and below the area to work on the muscles around the area because it isn't something you could correct anymore. So our goal is to F definitely be able to have the checkup sooner rather than later. So if you look at the holes here, if you look at the normal hole for the curve in the neck, it should be a big hole. But if you start to have arthritis, that hole gets much smaller. So our, always our goal is to make sure to have free flowing area for our nerves to function. So to help your joints, we want to make sure we don't carry uh, heavy objects in front of our bodies. We have proper lifting techniques, which we did numerous videos on it. We, we did videos on how to sit in a chair. We did videos on having a healthy desk environment and also make sure that uh, limiting our sitting time. We want to look at that head carriage. 
The more that our head is forward, the heavier our head is. You can see 60 degrees means your head is about 60 pounds. Imagine that over a long period of time, the strain that that will put on your neck and your lower back. And it doesn't mean you'll feel the pain at all, but the arthritis, the inflammation can be building up over time. So these are some of the tests we recommend. Making sure you have an x-ray, looking at your balance with the gait scan, looking at your nerve flow, at least that you would get your baseline to be able to have um, uh, an idea of if things get better or worse, even if you didn't pursue care, but at least the right exercises, the right home environment. So we definitely do uh, complimentary checkups um, or, or meet and greet to see if you need that checkup uh, by calling the office and then you can have that checkup or that meet and greet to determine how we can help you best. So exercise is also crucial, important. We are definitely designed to move, all right? So if you look at the cartoon coming up, it says, um, uh, it says here that I'm prescribing you exercise. Think of it as a stress pill that takes 30 minutes to swallow. All right. We know we can manage stress better on our joints, on our overall body if we get moving. So if we look, we are meant um, to move on a regular basis, even to prevent chronic disease, even to prevent things like osteoporosis. And we're never too old to exercise, never ever. Even patients in their 90s can improve their strength by over 100%. So you no know excuses, whether it's your age or even if you're sore and you have those achy joints, then get a professional to find the right exercises for you, customize them so that you can build that strength. We know that we are meant um, to move to improve brain function and that uh, the more you move, the, the clearer you think, the more you're able to manage stress. We know that prolonged sitting leads to chronic disease and obesity and diabetes. We're not meant to sit eight hours a day. So we were meant at every 15 minutes, even just stand up, reach a little and sit back down or like myself right now, to be at a standing desk. It's important um, that you cannot undo the damage of sitting by going for an hour run or going to the gym. Um, the more you sit, the more damage it is. So it's important to take that time, set an alarm, uh, set your phone to stand every 15 minutes, even if it's just 10 or 15 seconds, or like I'm doing like this, you could walk on the spot. You can do little bouncing on the spot while you're uh, listening to a podcast or while even you're doing your work. The standing desk that I'm at right now, um, it's $140, very stable and able to use that to um, do Zoom calls or do uh, different type of uh, office work. So standing desks, now they're getting so much more affordable, so many different options, um, staples, Amazon, lots of water. You see me taking my water, lots of breaks, um, making it so that you do have to move on a regular basis or sitting on a balance ball. We need to move and that includes stretching. So right now, just take your hands up, just a little stretch off to the side, right? Just to get your body moving. Because if you, every 15 minutes, even just 30 seconds of movement will help reduce that inflammation. And on our website, we have numerous exercises and stretching videos for your lower back, your mid back and your neck. And your eyes as well, to have exercises for your eyes. Mm -hmm. So there are computer stretches. So you can bring your hands out and in front, up and down. It doesn't take long to be able to do different computer stretches to make it so that you can take that little break um, to stop the arthritis, the inflammation response building up. You can see with your lower back, even doing the first one, the A and B, you'll see the cat stretch, moving your neck uh, mid back, up and back, because we see a lot of people that hunch forward. So even just that one that can be done sitting, 
standing or on all fours will make a big difference to help um, stop that arthritis and inflammatory response building up. Yes, I was just listening to everything you were saying and I was really conscious of my own posture too. I was feeling like I, I tend to hunch whenever I'm on the, in front of the computer and just even just doing those little stretches really helped me breathe better too. You know, I feel more awake. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So here are some foods that, you know, Dr. Justine mentioned posture, exercising, getting those adjustments is really important. And another thing is avoiding those foods that can increase that inflammation. So what are these things like soft drinks, alcohol, excess salt, excess sugar, and coffee as well. You know, if you're, if you're drinking a little bit more uh, like three to four cups a day, that can be um, really bad for your bones. You know, it can make your bones weak. So that's something that we need to talk about and, and potentially avoid. So another thing is um, aspartames. These are, you know, um, artificial sweeteners. So aspartame actually can turn into uh, formaldehyde in our body when it's uh, when it's going through all our processes. And that is, you know, as you know, formaldehyde is a well-known toxin. It's also it's not a, a really good diet product because, you know, when you when you think about taking artificial low calorie sweeteners. You think, oh, I'm taking this now. I can eat whatever I want because it's low calorie. Let me let me just indulge in that chocolate cake. So you can actually tend to gain weight because you know you're mentally thinking I'm healthier, but then you end up indulging more. So some other hidden source of sugar is, you know, it's in everything when you think about it. If you look at that label, the nutritional facts, I highly recommend taking a look uh, because you'll notice that there's so much sugar in even things like chicken noodle soup. You never think they might have a lot of sh sugar in that. Ketchup in, in the yogurts, in potentially healthy foods that you think um, might not have it. So uh, of, of course, fruit juice, you know, so much sugar in that. So these are some things to keep an eye out to always making sure you check that nutritional guide in the back of the, the product. So some sugar options, so these are, you know, um, natural sweeteners that don't necessarily increase your blood sugar, like sugar does. So xylitol, pure maple syrup, honey, stevia. So these are just natural sources of sugar that you can uh, substitute into your daily life. What are some foods that you can eat? So these are foods that are anti-inflammatory. They are they can be an amazing, powerful form of medicine in combination with, you know, the, the support that Dr. Justine mentioned about posture, about stretching, the exercises, the adjustments. Uh, all of these work, to, work together as a team to slow down the inflammation and the degeneration. So some things uh, that foods are, you know, going for that colorful fruits and vegetables and cutting down those bad fats and the processed foods. So what is, uh, what is this early glycation process? It sounds very scientific, but what it really means is it's something that our bodies do to excess sugar. So sugar binds to proteins and then it basically messes up the, the, the protein shape and the structure. So it can deposit in our organs, it can deposit in our skin. And these, um, these are called advanced glycated end products or AGEs for short, and they can literally age you because they, they will deposit into these uh, all of our important organs. So this is why you have to make sure you're controlling the, the sugar that you eat. So some uh, top anti-inflammatory foods, this is not a, not a hard list, you know, going for that, those vegetables, going for those healthy fats, going for those fatty, healthy fish that are wild caught like salmon, uh, eating lots of herbs and spices, you know, rosemary, thyme, putting that in, in the, the dishes that you make. Um, these are the anti-inflammatory foods and then eliminating or reducing those pro-inflammatory foods like junk food, um, sodas and things like that. And of course, we got to make sure, you know, our blood sugar is on top of everything, you know, so blood sugar is one of those things, when it spikes up, you get that huge spike in insulin, and that causes you to feel sleepy all of a sudden, because all that sugar that was making you all hyper now is absorbed into your, into your cells, and now your brain is craving for more blood sugar, um, some more sugar. So that's why you can get those crazy spikes when you're having poor blood sugar and, in, insurance, and insulin balance. So this is something to really talk to with a, a naturopath or a holistic nutritionist so, so you can manage your blood sugar so you're not getting those huge spikes. 
So on healthy gut versus a leaky gut. So this is one of my uh, my specialties. I love speaking to patients about this because trust me, a lot of people actually have leaky gut. You know, if you're experiencing bloating, if you're experiencing indigestion, if you're constipated, if you have diarrhea, you have potentially you have leaky gut. If you have food sensitivities, for example, too. So the gut is only one cell, one cell layer thick. Whereas our skin is up to seven cell layers thick. So when you think about that, you're comparing cardboard to tissue paper. So our gut is so easily uh, damaged by so many things. And that's why a lot of people can have these leaky gut issues. I just want to comment there, uh, Dr. Udani, is that even if you have achy joints and you think it's arthritic joints, your gut plays a role in those inflammatory joints. And that's why it's so important to, that I work with a naturopath in order to make that referral because when you change your gut health, that can change your arthritic health and your inflammatory response and reduce your pain. And I talked to a patient last night and she was like, well, I'm going to my medical doctor about my gut health and my sore stomach. And I said, that's great, don't, don't stop. But maybe you want a second opinion, a more natural opinion, and then you choose what's best for you. Maybe you want to look at the natural herb supplements changing your diet because versus only medications because that is an area that a naturopath specializes in compared to your medical doctor specializing in medication versus in lifestyle changes and nutritional changes and, and pharmaceutical natural supplements. So always important to have all aspects so you can make an informed decision on what's best for you and then ask yourself is this something i want to do long term do i want to do a medication long term or do i want to make a lifestyle change long term and then a choice is always up to you but i know my patients respond really well for arthritis when they have better gut health mm -hmm. I completely agree because, you know, everything can come through the gut and can deposit in your joints and it's really, and it can be healed. That's the, I want to say, you don't need to stay on supplements and things for a long term if you, if you adapt these lifestyle changes and so your gut, our bodies are resilient, right? So we, we, we have that inner knowledge and the inner wisdom in our bodies to heal. So some symptoms of recognizing uh, for recognizing stress is, you know, you can have the joint pain, you can have the, the digestive issues, you can have brain fog, memory issues, you're tired all the time. So these are signs that, you know, the stress is kind of getting too much and it's just causing all these um, effects all over your body. So some tips for a great night's sleep. So I know, you know, especially during this time, you know, it's, it's quite a stressful time for everybody. People might not be getting that, that great good night's sleep. And some tips um, is to make sure that, you know, you have good sleep hygiene. So what that means is turning off those lights, not using your computer in your bedroom, making sure you have a blue light filter, for example, on your phone or your computer that cancels that blue light. And of course, you know, do some exercise is really great as well because, you know, you're getting that blood flow, you're kind of relaxing yourself, relaxing the muscles, maybe doing some yoga or stretching. These are some things for a great night's sleep. Because sleep is really important for reducing our stress and of course helping with detox as well so you know our liver is our main main organ for detoxing making sure we are detoxing the alcohol or the food that we eat or any kind of heavy metals and things like that so we got to make sure our liver is working well and it is working optimally so some five blood tests for inflammation. So these are some tests that I, I personally order as well to make sure to see how is your body doing? Like, is it really um, uh, coping with any kind of stress? Is it okay with um, with dealing with this inflammation? So high um, blood sugar is one of the great markers. I look for fasting insulin. So, so, so serum ferritin is your iron storage protein. So that's important as well. And then C-reactive protein. So these are all tests that I can do as well as your medical doctor, if you speak to them, can do as well. So just to make sure how you're doing, because it's important to get a baseline test to see where you are and where you want to get. So some five ways to reduce inflammation quickly. So Dr. Justine and I just talked about this over and over again because it's just so important and just so simple but so effective is you have to have good movement, good hydration, eating those good foods, 
reducing the stress and getting that sleep, good quality sleep, and of course, having that support to have a healthy inflammatory response. You don't get those achy joints and pains. Getting that adjustment done to make sure your, your joints are moving fine and you have that optimal function. So some major nutritional factors for inflammation. So we talked about cutting down those fats because damaging fats can increase your inflammation, Crazy high blood sugar has a big impact, and of course, chemical toxins. And Dr. Jockers has so many free, so many free um, articles and resources about this if you want to go deeper. So, top food ingredients that promote inflammation. So, we talked a little bit about the, the bad fats, the high sugary foods, the processed foods, you know, trans fats. I remember when uh, when I was in a naturopath and I had those stressful exams, and I would just go straight for Timmy's um, donuts or the French vanilla. I remember one time I drank it every day, one medium French vanilla a day for a whole week, and I felt so terrible, Dr. Justine. I just my body was shutting down. I was breaking out. I was I was even more stressed. My sleep was bad. So these are just signs that your body kind of is telling you, listen. My joints are aching. Okay, maybe I'm taking in too much gluten. Maybe I'm eating too many of these processed meats. And so these are all signs that these foods have a really big impact on you in terms of inflammation. So what is gluten and why is it bad for you? So gluten gets a, a bad rap because there's been a lot of people, a lot of gluten sensitivities lately. And, you know, back in the day, in the in the previous generations, we, we tend to have gluten that wasn't as processed, you know? So gluten is part of wheat that makes it sticky. So um, this protein can be hard for some people to digest and it can, um, our immune system can have a response to it. So back in the day, you know, a lot of us had the unprocessed, pure sprouted gluten, for example, that was easier to digest because they already had the enzymes. But these days, you know, with the all the other triggers, you know, with the lack of movement, a lack of hydration, everything's kind of coming together. And we also have the gluten sensitivity that, that a lot of people experience too. So this is another um, side for impact of sugar on the body. So of course, you know, if you have a lot of sugar and you're not working out to burn that off, you are gonna have weight gain. It's gonna affect your brain because sugar lights up the same pathways that cocaine does. Because our brains are just, uh, they can be addicted to sugar. It's a very addictive molecule. Like I said, I had those, those times where I was addicted to, you know, it was Timmy's second cup, um, all these things. So it can lead to, um, cavities it can have heart issues so a lot of issues in your body because of all this this sugar so some what are some healthy uh, ways to swap or eliminate refined carbs so you know if you're going for that pasta if that's your staple food why not switch it with some zucchini pasta or using some shiitake noodles or even just to switch to gluten-free pasta. You know, some some simple ways where you can have these switches and swaps, but still have that taste and the you know the feeling that you're getting the the food that you love. So, for example, rice you can have switches to a cauliflower rice. Mashed potatoes you can have cauliflower mashed potatoes. Bread you can do co coconut flour instead of you know that white uh, bread. You can have multi grain. You can have all these kinds of swaps you can, that are really, really helpful with your diet. So the difference between grain-fed beef and grass-fed beef. So this is um, something that we've talked uh, about just the quality of the beef, right? You are what you ate, ate. So making sure that the, the meats that you're eating comes from um, a pastures or places that the that they had access to a lot of more nutrients, a lot more minerals, instead of just being force-fed a grain-based diet, right? Because that's not going to improve the quality of that meat. What's going to improve? What's what's going to improve the quality of the meat is that animal being able to range freely, eating and getting all those amazing nutrients into it. Because that means you, that's going to be passed down to you as well. And these meats tend to be healthier, less fat in them than the the more conventional grain-fed beef. So same thing goes for fish as well. So anytime you are thinking of getting salmon, make sure you get the wild caught fish because they tend to be less uh, lower in fats um, and a little bit higher in the omega-3 anti-inflammatory fats. And they also tend to just, you know, 
be fed because of the diet that they were fed. You know, it's a more of a wider range diet and they're a little bit less in the chemical toxins and things like that because, you know, they are, they have a wider range to swim around compared to farm raised salmons. So always trying to get to that wild caught salmon is important. Yes, so good fats versus bad fats. Good fats are any fat that has really not been processed too much. So anything that is giving you that anti-inflammatory benefit. So things like olive oil, fish oil, butter, grass-fed butter is great. Um, coconut milk, ghee, tallow. These are animal fats that are, you know, um, can be good for you compared to bad fat like soybean oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil. These are more of the omega-6, like even the margarine, you know, um, that that's just um, really that's man-made synthetic. So you really don't even want that. Why, why not switch to grass-fed butter? That's a better alternative. Yes. And this is actually a huge concern that's coming up recently. They posted, uh, Dr. Justine, an article in Harvard Health about um, food additives and the, the rise in ADD and ADHD in children. So these artificial colors, you know, there's not a lot of research being done on what they're actually do doing to our bodies and what they're doing to our brains. So, you know, um, anytime you're exposed to artificial dyes, artificial colors, preservatives, MSGs, these are like little toxins that are just coming into your body, increasing that inflammation, coming, creating holes in our gut, creating holes in our joints. All these things are things to kind of keep in mind of to, to eliminate or to reduce as much as possible. So this is, we talked a little bit about this. I'm just going to go quickly over this. So what are the fats that you should be eating? Um, making sure, um, especially if you're seeing hot uses, if you're burning things, use things like coconut oil because they have a higher um, melting point. So they're not going to go bad as quickly as, for example, if you used olive oil. Olive oil is great for drizzling on salads, but not so good if you want to fry things because it tends to go go bad quickly. Um, of course, you know, some good things are like nuts and seeds. So switching your snacks and instead of going for that chocolate bar, have some nuts. So and of course, ditching, making sure you're ditching those, un, um, those unhealthy um, fats and oils like margarine and canola and soybean and things like that. Yeah, so I mentioned this previously too. Artificial sweeteners are can be really bad for you. They can kind of stay in your system for long. It can cause digestive issues, brain fog, really mess up your gut uh, bacteria as well. So everything that you 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 take into your body has some kind of effect, right? It's either going to be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory, and you know there. That's why you know you need to make sure you are eating more of the anti-inflammatory good things that can help with your joint pain because all of these things are connected. So these are some things that can reduce arthritis and inflammatory pain. So really something, things like turmeric, things like ginger, omega-3 grapefruits. So these are things to add to your diet and you can even use it in supplement form that can help with joint pain because they kind of calm down that inflammation. We want the inflammation to be going down. Yes. So these are some other foods that fight inflammation, things like olive oil, nuts, fatty fish, tomatoes, things to add to your diet. So you're not, and you're going to notice a boost in your energy as well because you're putting in all these healthy foods. Yes, yeah, some more foods. So these are papaya, avocado, blueberries. Berries are so high in antioxidants. Um, same thing with broccoli as well, you know, so high in good liver protecting antioxidant things to put in that fight inflammation. So let's speak, talk a little bit about avocado, one of my favorite uh, vegetables slash fruits to eat. You know, it's so versatile. You can put it in salads, you can put it in smoothie, you can make chocolate mousse out of it. Like it is just one of those things that's so great. And it has so many good, um, it has vitamin E, so many great um, fatty acids that just really help like over 20 uh, essential health nutrients uh, that can be helpful for you. 
And so some best source of calcium. So the following few slides are about how to improve, you know, certain minerals that you might be having. And this is where I really recommend talking to a nutritionist or talking to a naturopath or your health professional, because some, some of you might not need as much as the other person. So it's important to know, uh, to get a baseline test just to be safe, to get everything done. So some of the source of calcium, of course, you know, you got green leafy vegetables, lots of um, those root veggies, sea vegetables, tofu. These are some natural ways you can have increase your calcium intake. And things that can increase calcium absorption is things like vitamin D, things like magnesium. And uh, these are, you can also get this from supplement form. And before I, so like I mentioned before, Make sure you are you're well informed before trying these uh, supplements, because you know it can be confusing. You it's hard to kind of see what is a, what is the right thing for you. But these are some things that can help with calcium absorption. Some supplements that can help with energy. So these are additional things. I always want to reiterate that diet is should always be number one to increasing your energy. But some things that can help in terms of supplements for energy include things like B vitamins, things like a multivitamin, essential oils, vitamin D3. So these are all things that can kind of give you that extra boost that you need to go on your day to day. Supplements for arthritis. So I just wanna say nothing can really um, prevent or um, help with arthritis like good posture, good exercise, making sure you're getting those adjustments um, way back ahead because you know arthritis is something that kind of takes years to develop. So it, that means you have all this time to stop it as well. So these are some supplements that can help with arthritis is things that reduce that inflammation, right? Because arthritis is about joint, like the pain and the inflammation is causing the joints to not move properly. So vitamin C, uh, evening primrose oil, all these things are some things that can really help. And I encourage you to go further into these slides as we as we go. Yeah, so I'm not saying you need to take all of these, but these are things that are, you know, options that uh, you, uh, you, you have. These are natural options that you have that can help with, uh, with arthritis. Yeah, so some, what are some other things, uh, some therapies, chiropractic therapy, massage, acupuncture, naturopathy, physiotherapy, these are all amazing because we, they they all look at the, the individual as a whole, right? Not just thinking, oh, I'm going to give you a pill to take your pain away, but because we're not really taking that root cause away. So these are great because we all work as a team to make sure uh, we reduce whatever is causing the inflammation in the first place that's giving you that those painful joints yes so there's some non 10 non-drug so, solutions for pain relief that could be found in your cabinet so these are you know things like eliminating those processed foods those high sugars from your diet because those are going to be constantly bombarding your body with inflammation making sure you're getting your right vitamin d3 go outside enjoy a nice sunny day, go for those walks, you know, get in your mindset clear. Things like ginger, things like curcumin, these are great antioxidants that help with your joints, um, with basically everything, lowering that inflammation down. Boswellia, bromelain, these are, you know, more specific um, ingredients in certain uh, fruits and plants that can help with pain relief. So, these are just some great non-drug solutions for pain relief. And this is not some to say that you need to take only these. Of course, we need to speak with your other um, doctors and everybody in your team to make sure you're on um, the right um, form, the right protocol for you. So like I said, you know, emotional freedom technique can be amazing as well. If you're holding on to a lot of negative emotions that can be, you know, causing those joint pains or affecting your mind and things like that. So always thinking about your mindset is important as well. Yes. Yeah, so 
Thank you so much for listening to our talk on inflammation. I hope you got a wonderful amount of information and great things. Please share with your friends and family and for anyone that will find this information helpful. Gosh, Justine and I always have so much fun, uh, you know, doing all these talks for you and really just want to give you that information as a gift because we truly believe that you, you don't need to you know, depend on a drug or things like that. You can get better. You can be healthy with the right mindset and the right team behind you. So some things that we uh, have in the future is, you know, we have our fall makeover. So Dr. Justine's been doing this amazingly and I'm helping her this year. This is in October 20th. It's going to be a jam packed. We had so much fun uh, doing this. So it's going to be something to look forward to. So we hope you really tune into that. And we also have some other events like interview with our physiotherapist. We also have Conquering Anxiety and a special event uh, that's also going to be supported by a summit that will help will give more information about. And of course, and then further down, we have intermittent fasting, the do's and don'ts of fasting. So how to overcome those food cravings. Because we all know we have those food cravings. And that's going to be fun to talk about as well. And of course, making sure, you know, connect with us, let us know. We'd love to hear your feedback, um, connect and sharing this information as well. And we just can't wait to uh, get back to you again and then do more of these talks and get your feedback. Thank you. Thank you.